Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from LightsailVR.com. In this video, we're going to be talking about the switcher node and instancing video in Assimilate LiveFX. The switcher node allows you to have multiple inputs and outputs in the same project, and you can easily switch between them. And when I say instancing video, there may be a better technical term, but in game engines, when you instance an object instead of duplicating it, it allows you to render thousands of those objects with very little performance cost. LiveFX has a similar way of dealing with video, and this can be very powerful for virtual production. One example is sending the same video to an LED wall and to a lighting array when you want to color them separately or when you want to map them separately. Most programs would have to process this video twice, but LiveFX only needs to process it once. Make sure to subscribe to get more videos like this, and let's jump in. Okay, to use the switcher node, you need to have at least two clips in your timeline here. So, I'm going to, instead of importing clips or doing live setup, I'm actually gonna use this filler utility. This is actually a great way, think of it kind of like an empty. So I like to use this color bar 75%, and then for the second one, I'm gonna do something different, just so you can see that it is separate. So I'll do a checkerboard. And now if I hold down shift, and I select both of these, you can see they're both yellow. I can click on switcher, and now I have the switcher node, and I can now delete these if I want to. It's probably a different way of doing it. This is the easiest way, I think, to get the switcher node set up properly. So if I double click on this, <clears throat> and I zoom out here, if I go to the switcher, the top left button here, this is gonna be switcher, and I can open the channel controller. Now, we, remember we had two output inputs, so we have input one. If I click on input two, you can see that's input two. So I can switch back and forth between these. And that is the basics of the switcher node. Now, there's a lot of other things we can do here. Um, if we want to make a change to just this channel that's selected, one or two, I can go to numeric, and let's say I take the, actually, let's do the master up. So let's make it brighter. Now, if I switch to the input two, you can see that the master is still zero. Input one, the master is higher. Input two, master is, let's make it lower. So they're more different. And I can also make adjustments to the master. So if I click on master, and let's say I want to add red to the lift. This does kind of something kind of strange. But we can see that it affects the master, both of these. And I can continue to do that um, all throughout. So I'm gonna go back to channel. I'm going to get these back to zero just because I want to. For displays, I'm actually going to set up another monitor and show you this part here in a little bit. Okay, for instancing video, what we wanna do is turn on this staging button and let's go ahead and import a clip. Let's use this render test and I'm going to put this in staging. You can see the staging button is on. I can actually, with this clip attached, I can actually turn it on or off. So make sure this is on. I'm gonna put this here. Now if I turn this off, it looks like it disappears, but if I turn it on, you can see it's there. So now on our right, you can see there are versions, node tree, staging, metadata. So let's look at this staging tab. Now you might be tempted to just click this and drag it into your project, but you don't wanna do it that way. What you wanna do is let's create a new layer and we'll call this layer one and then go to the fill mat tab and then you're gonna drag from the staging tab, you're gonna drag that into the fill. So drop it right there. And there we go, we have layer one. And we're gonna repeat that for layer two. We're gonna do layer three. And we'll do layer four. For now, we're just gonna keep it with four. Now we have these four different layers. I'm going to resize these so that they fit better. I'm gonna hold down shift so it all scales at the same time. So you can see we have these four videos and I don't know if you've noticed or not, but our frame rate is still 24. It has not suffered in performance at all. One way you can see that they're being instanced is by going to the node tree and checking it. So if we go to the node tree, um, you can see this is what we have here. We have our switcher tab. We have our switcher node at the very top. <clears throat> and then underneath our color bars, this is our input one. We have layer one, which is this, layer two, layer three, layer four. And then we can see we have a video at the bottom of all these. Now, if we did not do the staging and we did not do the fill, if we did not do this uh, fill layer here, then all of these videos would be 
basically processed individually. So it'd be processed four times. And the way I can know these are not being forced, processed four times is by clicking on this color bar here, seeing all four of these. And if I go to this bottom one, I can, let's, let's say I desaturate it. If this affects all of the other ones, then it is being instanced. So right now, by affecting that one, it has affected all four of these, and I know that they are being instanced. And this is a great way to make global changes. So if you want to, let's say, add some saturation here, and add an S-curve, and we want all of our videos to have this global parameter done to it, going down to this layer is a great way to do that. Uh, another tip here is if you want to see this view but affect this layer, you can click on this view, you can click on this node, and then go to this lock key over here. So you lock this, then I can click down here on this node, and it doesn't change the view, but I can change this and see all four of them. So I'm going to go back to 120, and that looks good to me. So now I can, I can also grade these individually by clicking on the layers, either on the nodes or on the layer itself up here, or on the video. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to change this to be quite different just so we know that I can, in fact, grade them separately and or make global changes. So again, if I go to performance monitor, you can see we're still at 24 frames a second. And let's go ahead and add a bunch more just to see how far we can push it. So here is a more extreme example. There's 15 videos here. They're all running back at real time at 24 frames a second here. Uh, you can see the, the shadow moving here if I, if I watch here for a second. So you can see that shadow is moving in, in all of these videos at the same time. And they are all being instanced. So it's playing back with no problems whatsoever. Let's do this again without instancing just to compare. And this time I will just import the clip, open, and then I will alt and duplicate. And you can see that even just adding a few of these, we've already dropped to 14 frames a second. And that's because, like most video programs, it is now processing it as six different videos. And it can cache some of this. So you can see it jumped up there for a second because it had some frames cached. But obviously, if you have a long clip, <clears throat> it's not going to be able to cache all the frames and keep them cached. You can see it's having a, a big issue trying to play back these 15 videos. And we're at six frames a second, and I don't even think we're at that because it is uh, very, very choppy. And again, to illustrate the, the fact that it's not being instance, if I go into the node tree over here, and let me affect this video here. I'll just go to numeric, go down, pull the saturation down. If I click on the next node over, you can see it's completely unaffected. So it's reading the same file 15 different times, and it's processing it 15 different times. So obviously, this is typically not what you want to do. <laughs> But it's a good example to show why instancing is so important and why it's so powerful. Okay, so let's look at a different example now. So I'm going to duplicate this by holding Alt and dragging over here. And now if I open this, I can delete all of these layers. To just have one. Go back and I can do reset over here. Yes, it's gonna reset all of this. I can go into Canvas, I can hold down Control and left click. This is going to reset all these values so I have just a normal video here. And now I can go to input one, input two. And <clears throat> just like we instance the video for all of these layers, I can do the same thing for input two. So under channels, channel, input two. I can go into staging, have this open, create a layer, and then go into fill and drag this on to the layer here. Um, again, you can see it's sort of um, looping, 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 which is not what we want. So you can go into Live Effects tab and change the out point. And you can go into the node tree and check here to see if any of these are set to something like they shouldn't, which is this one. Enter. Now it's playing as normal. So now if we go to input one and input two, they're playing the same video. If I go into input one, let's just 
desaturate this again just so we can see there's a difference between input one and input two. And now what we can do is we can send these two different places. So for that, I'm going to start recording on my phone. So now you can see I have my dual head over here. Dual head is basically just your external monitor. So if this is, this represents the LED wall, um, this could be 10 different displays all ganged together with mosaic, doesn't really matter. This dual head is basically our LED wall and this is our editor. So if we go into channel one and channel two, the way it's set up right now is if I go into displays, you can see everything is set to active channel. So active channel means that whichever one of these I'm on, and you can see it says active channel. If I switch to input two, all of these are gonna go to input two. So dual head display, what that means is this LED wall. So if I want to send input two to always be going to the LED wall, I can do that here. And now if I switch back to input one, my active channel, you can see that my editor switched back to input one, but my dual head stayed on the uh, input two. So now you can, let's say that input one is for lighting. We can do things differently than we do for our screen. So in input one, we can, let's say, let's add a plugin. Let's do lens and distort it to this layer and then I'm going to take the K1 values and I'm going to, going to unstretch, undistort this basically so that it looks something like this. And in fact, let's just do something a little bit more extreme. If I zoom out, I can zoom in and out separately using the fill mat. And actually this will make more sense on the dual head. If we go over to our dual head, we can go to the fill mat, click on this layer one, and now we can scale out so that it matches our LED wall better. Remember, this is an 8K image. So if we want 8K to fill up our LED wall, for instance, we might have to scale it in input one, but, or excuse me, in input two. But our lighting map might need to see the full 8K image so this is a, a very, very useful tool to be able to scale and color grade and do really advanced uh, techniques separately from each other. And so let's look at another example. Let's import a 360 clip. I'm not going to instance these, I'm just going to impo import them. Right click, import clip. I'll do the same one, turn this off and I'll scale this down just so we can see it. So obviously the equirectangular view is distorted in such a way that doesn't really work for the LED wall. Now there's different ways you can manipulate it, but the best way is probably to use a plugin. So if I go down to plugins, effects, VR, and then EQ to 2D transformer, apply on layer. So it's going to apply this and now we have an undistorted view of that file. Now I might need to fill the area better. So this is again a more, a, a more of a real example of how we might distort it differently in our input two, but input one, we actually would want to see the full echo rectangular. And in fact, what you might want to do for lighting is go into plugins and let's go to VR transformer, apply on layer. And now you have this convert option and we can go to echo rectangular to cubic packed. And then what this does is gives you undistorted views in a cube map that you can use for your light. So for your overhead light, you can map it to this and if I press play, you can see it is actually a video. And this might be a really great way to map your lighting 
separately from your video. And if you use the instancing, like I showed before, it would only have to reference that video once. Okay, that wraps up this video. Make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.